This is the notes for section 8.2, Fundamental Properties of Area. If you haven't done so already, make sure you stop the video at this time and read the section before uh, going on with the notes. We'd like to first uh, define what area is, something that you've worked with quite a bit through other courses. Uh, when we say area, it's the measure of the space covered by a two-dimensional region. Okay, the key is that we're talking about a space that's being covered. Uh, usually, or when we measure space, um, we're going to measure that in square units. So as I look at this picture here, um, the area, which is 135 square units, is represented by the stuff that is inside of this rectangle. As I move the air, as I move the rectangle around it's going to change the area. It changes the perimeter as well, but it's going to change the area more substantially. Okay, You'll see that the area inside still represents the number of square units that we have there. So the four fundamental properties of area and the area postulate. From your reading you should have filled out this section of your notes. Uh, in, including all of the, the missing information there. But I'd like to just take a minute to uh, talk about each one of these different properties and just summarize them a little bit. The first is the uniqueness property. What the uniqueness property tells us is that if you have a, a, a polygon and, and you have a region of that polygon, the area of, of that polygon is unique, meaning that there is only one area for any given polygon. The congruence property just says that if you have uh, figures that are congruent to each other, well then their areas has to must be the same as well. The third property, the additive property, um, it, it says the area of the union of two non-overlapping regions is the sum of the areas of the regions. What what the additive property does is it allows us to take a figure and break it into to other figures that we can find the area of. As long as we've covered the, the entire figure, we can add those areas together to get the area of, of the entire figure. And we'll really be applying that uh, today in some of our problems. Okay. The fourth and final uh, uh, postulate or area postulate uh, property is the, the rectangular formula. Every, every formula that we're going to have for area is really built off of the idea of the rectangle formula. And that, that just says that the area of a rectangle with dimensions of length and width is the length times the width. Therefore, area is equal to length times width. So I'd like to take a look at a couple of problems now that relate uh, to the area positive. And the first is if you're given a figure that is not a rectangle, um, we can still find the area of it by using the fact that we can break it up into smaller rectangles and add those, the, 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 uh, the sum of those to get the total. Uh, so it says find the area of the region by breaking it up into smaller polygonal regions. Okay, so as I look at, um, at this, I've, I've divided my rectangle up. Now this is certainly not the only way that you have to do it. But um, I've divided my rectangle or my figure into all rectangles, and now I need to find the area of each of those rectangles. To do that, I have to look at the ordered pairs to find the length and width of each of those rectangles. So as I look at this first rectangle, I'm going to call this rectangle 1 right here. I'm going to find the area of it by finding its length and its width. Well, if, if you're trying to find a distance that goes um, horizontally, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at the difference between the x values. And if you're trying to find a distance vertically, well then you have to take a look at the difference between the y values. So in this particular first rectangle, the distance from j to i, this that, that length, is 2 units because the difference between 3 and 1 is 2. And then if I look at this distance, going from uh, I all the way up to H, that will give me the length of that rectangle. So I'm going from 1 to 6. Well, the difference between that is 5. Therefore, the area of rectangle 1 is 5 times 2, or 10 square units. 
Okay. So for each one of those rectangles, I'm going to do the exact same approach. I'm going to find the dimensions, and then I'm going to uh, multiply them together to get the area. So if I look at rectangle 2 here, um, if I look at vertically, I'm going from 8 to 6. So that would be 2 units. And horizontally, the furthest left I'm at is at 1. And the furthest right I go to is 6. So the difference between 1 and 6, that gives me 5 units as well. So that rectangle actually has the exact same area of 10 square units. Okay. Now let's take a look at rectangle 3 and find its area. So if I look at the width of rectangle 3 going from 6 to 8, that would be 2 units. And then I'm going from uh, 3, if, I, if I'm looking at it vertically now, I'm going from 3 up to 8. Okay, That is also 5 units, therefore that is 10 square units. And then finally, rectangle 4. And then to find the area of the whole thing, I can add those up, which would be 36 square units. <laughs>So let's take a look at example two here. It says a family is installing ceramic tiles on a kitchen countertop. The countertop is 16 feet long and two and a half feet deep. There are four parts that will not be tiled. A three foot by two uh, foot sink opening, um, two openings that are two, and a half, two feet by one and a half feet for cutting boards and an opening that's one foot by two foot for knives. Each tile is one foot by one foot and costs $2.20. How much do the tiles cost? So what I want to do first of all is I want to just draw a picture of what's going on. So I, I did my sink cut out here that's two two by three in terms of feet. I have the cutting boards that are two feet by a foot and a half each. Okay. And then I have finally a the knife cut out which is two feet by one feet. So what I want to do is I want to find the area of everything and then subtract out the area of these things that won't be tiled. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to take the 16 feet that, that we have here, 16, by 2 and a half, and I'm going to multiply those together, and then I'm going to subtract out the other stuff. So I'm going to subtract 2 times 3. I'm going to subtract 2 times 1 and a half. I'm going to subtract out another 2 times 1 and a half. And finally, I'm going to subtract a 2 times 1. Okay, So this, this is going to give me the area of that entire region. If I do that, I get 16 times 2 and a half is 40. And then the other things that I'm cutting out, if I add those all up, I get 14. 6 plus um, these two together are going to be 6, which is 12, and then another 2 is 14. So because they're all being subtracted from the total, I'm just going to do 40 minus 14. If I do that, I get 26, and that's in terms of um, square feet of, of tiles that, that, that um, we need to uh, take care of. Okay. Now since the tiles are 1 foot by 1 foot, the area of one tile um, is equal to one square foot. Okay, therefore there's going to be 26 tiles needed, and to get the total cost, I'm going to take that times two dollars and twenty-two cents. So I'm going to take 26 times two dollars and twenty cents. And if I do that, I get $57.20. Therefore, the tile is going to cost $57.20. So the next area we'd like to take a look at is changing units of area. Um, and we can manipulate the formula of a rectangle to derive formulas for the other figures, as I mentioned earlier in this video. In fact, all of, all of them are going to be derived from that. So for example, if we think about a square, we know a square, the length and the width are equal to each other. So the area is equal to the length times width for a rectangle. A square is a rectangle. So if the length of one side is s, 
then the other side is also s, therefore the area is s squared. So a formula for finding the area of a square is just s squared. So that's why we have this formula for a square, a equals s squared. Now we can think about that as we as we change between different units. Now there's a lot of different units that we can use for measuring um, the area of a figure. We can use the, just the basic units, but basically any measurement that we can use for finding a length of something, we can square it to find the area of something. So for instance, if I look at the square right here, this square is one yard by one yard, therefore it's considered one square yard. Well, I also know that one yard is equal to three feet. So that means if it's one yard going across this way, it's also three feet going across that way. And then the same thing going down this side. If it's one yard on this side, it's going to be three feet on that side. Therefore, if you look at the number of squares that are one foot by one foot or one square foot, there's actually a total of nine of them. Therefore, one square yard is actually equal to nine square feet.